Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give our honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, the bars to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth to rule well. I'm going to go into something uh, real quick. You know, um, I was watching the video from Elder Apostle Gabar, and he was talking about the stages, you know, being in this truth and, and the stages you go through. You know, the first two stages is number one, the monkey. All right. And, and he made mention monkey see, monkey do. All right. So the monkey's going to mimic. All right. Going to try and copy what you're, what you're doing. And then the next is the parrot. The parrot will copy saying everything you do or say, you know. And then you have the toad, which the toad is, is very stubborn. All right. And, and a lot of people in this in this earth are, are basically stuck in, in the first three phases. All right. You might have some that tap into a little bit of the owl, which comes after the toad. And then um, after the toad, you have the owl. After the owl, you have the serpent or the dragon. Right. Speaking as a dragon which is a lot more powerful than, of course, the toad, the owl, and the, um, the, um, um, the, uh, parrot or the monkey, right? So coming into this truth, you know, you, you do have to strive, strive to be part of the elect, all right? And part of the elect is going to be in the upper two right they're gonna be as owls and be as dragons you know and i didn't know the significance of of all those animals all right i knew a little bit about the owl and a little bit about the dragon but i didn't know the levels that it took in this truth right so before i came into this truth i was a a a, a monkey and a parrot everything i heard concerning scripture all right, I, I went out and mimicked what I heard, not understanding anything about it, not knowing anything at all. You know, I, I was a parrot and a, and a monkey, mo mostly a monkey. Coming into this truth, I was I was a half parrot, right? So I would mimic everything that I heard, you know, but I also wanted to learn why, you know, why is it this way? Why are we this way? You know, why is, is life this certain a uh, way favoring a certain specific group of people and why isn't it favoring a certain specific uh, group of people why is the most high this way why is this and why is that right those questions that i had within myself uh you know really led me through the spirit um to want a change right to want a different answer and and before i came into this truth i was already seeking that answer trying to stop eating pork trying to find the, the way of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? And I would continually go back into the world after I, I tried to do these things on my own, you know? And until a brother, the brother Yeh uh brought this truth to me, you know, and, and he, he showed me certain things. And instead of being a toad, like I was my whole life, stubborn to what anybody else said, all right? Stubborn to, to learn any new way, stubborn to certain things right i didn't want to read the book of job is the only book i never really you know wanted to get into because of what it spoke right because it spoke a lot of truth it spoke a lot of the most high is in control the most high can can put your life in in danger if he feels like and i was i was a toad i didn't want to listen to that right well when the brother yet brought me into it, he said before we get any further i want you to read the book of job and tell me what you think right so i went into the book of job and and you know, he started teaching me and, and growing me in this faith and in this truth until eventually I, I gave up on being a toad and I wanted to become an owl. Right. And that owl is really what I want to get into now, you know, because coming into this truth as the as the elder was was speaking on these things. All right. I was I was uh, looking at myself and seeing what am I? You know, what am I? Have I grown being in this truth? And if I haven't, that's a dangerous thing, right? If I haven't grown in this truth, then I can possibly see death pretty soon. The Most High can punish me within the next few hours, the next few days, the next few seconds, you know? 
It's unlucky. It's unlucky. I have this stuff right here. I'm making a video. You know, so I was thinking to myself, what am I? You know, have I grown since I came into this truth? And and where do, where would I place myself? Do I just mimic what the elders say? Or do I just mimic what I hear? All right. Or, or do I have some type of understanding? Am I stubborn to new things that come out? All right. As, as the elder was speaking, I was I was seeing if I was truly a man of the Lord, you know, and my final conclusion was not to to. To to make myself more than what I am, but also to abase what I am, you know, to to keep it simple. You know, to keep it simple, Salaki, um, or, or to to, you know, bring myself, you know, even even lower than what I feel like I am. You know, scriptures speak about that as well. Not to not to sit yourself in a high placing seat, because then another's gonna come and he's gonna dethrone you, man. He's gonna he's gonna say, hey, what the hell are you doing in my seat? You know, <laughs> get out of my seat in a nice in a nicer way, and you're gonna be ashamed of yourself. Like, damn, man, I really thought myself to be some type of you know, leader, and I'm actually, you know, just a, a, a simple, simple dude, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lower than the rest, you know, so, so scriptures talk about, you know, checking yourself and, and visualizing yourself, and when I, when I did so, I, I saw that I was a beginning of, of an owl, right, because I know I'm a seer, all right, and, and the water, you how about me, I was shy, <laughs> Because I wanted to go into a, a specific uh, subject, all right? And I didn't know what it was. So I went back and I listened to the video of the elder. And then he went into into the owl. And I was like, you know what? I'll just go into the owl. But the word I really wanted to go into was the word seer. All right? Seer. Because of this truth, right? So I'll, I'll try and tie both of those together, Lord willing, in, in the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and Lord willing, it's edifying. Right, but this is Isaiah twenty-eight and verse nine. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. All right. Now, so to the simple ear, when I first heard this, I understood it right away. Right, because it's talking about knowledge. It's talking about doctrine. It's talking about the understanding. Right. And then it said, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And the, and the spirit immediately uh, showed me, you know, that the that the Bible or the scriptures is what it's talking about. Right. And then whenever, you know, I was discussing this with the brother, Yabataza, he brought out the book of, of Peter, where it talks about the, the, the desiring the sincere milk of the word. Right. And that should be your desire, desiring the sincere milk of the word, desiring truth. Desiring knowledge, understanding, wisdom, desiring Yahweh, desiring Yahweh Shai, desiring the names, desiring that pure language, desiring spiritual gifts, desiring prophecy. You have to desire all of it, man. That's 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 the mindship, uh, uh, the mindship, the the mind of the elect, right? The, being in that kingship state of mind, you know, being a king in a state of mind of a king, man. Being a leader, being a seer, being a prophet, you know, that that's the mindset you need to be on, you know. So again, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? All right. Who are those people that are going to receive it? It says them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts, you know, a baby when a baby's born. Right. How is the baby going to eat? He's going to be weaned to the breast. Right. He's going to he's going to uh, uh, be weaned to the milk and he's going to draw it out of the breast. Right. So where are we getting our spiritual food from? All right. You have to pay attention to the knowledge, to the doctrine, and you have to pay attention to the understanding that that person says they have. Right. You, you can tell when something's BS and when something's not, you know, it, it doesn't go based off of making you uncomfortable. Right. Because you might have a, a man that tells a woman, you know, your place is not to be 
speaking up against me especially in, in, in a you know if you're in a, in a place of, of many people and he says it out loud and you know people look at him one he's right but two it's uncomfortable so which one is it is it correct or is it incorrect well it's correct all right because he's right about it but it's uncomfortable right the same thing with this truth it may be uncomfortable for some people talking about back then you were able to rape you know and i made a mention of it in my in my previous video all right that doesn't mean that doesn't give you a car to go out there and start raping women all right you'd be a damn fool if you do man it was written in the law for a reason you know so yeah it, it's lawful but yet is it expedient and that's according to the scriptures all things are lawful unto me but not expedient right i can have three wives if i want to and all of them, you know, can be in agreement that, in, in agreement that they want to be with me. It's lawful, but is it expedient? If you're not grown in this truth, if you're not, you know, firmly rooted in this truth, you even having a second woman, man, even having a first woman, right? You even having one woman is difficult enough, <laughs> you know? Imagine having two women and then balancing those two women and children and family members and balancing all that with this truth and going out to the highways and the byways and doing what a man of the Lord must do. That's why the Apostle Paul was like, I would rather you guys be like me. Right. I would rather you not be out there with with all those women, children and and females and worrying about those things, because having a woman has you worry has you worried about things of the world to please that woman. Vice versa. But being in the spirit has you things worried about the spirit, right? Things that are spiritual, things that are right for doctrine and things that are uh, 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 truth and knowledgeable, you know? Bringing your, your, uh, uh, your sacrifice that's meat for repentance, which is being in this world, using it, not abusing it, and being as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove, right? So being an owl, all right, this is the video from the elder. It's animal symbols and their relation to understanding and learning, right? So let's look up the word owl, see what it says on that. Any of numerous, chiefly nocturnal birds. All right, so it goes into what it really is. A person of owl-like solemnity, solemnity or appearance, all right? Appearing late at night or all night. Right, and that's why the, the owls That's why the owls were seen as that You know uh, As, as a, a state of, of Knowledgeable Wisdom You know Because the owls are seers Even in the darkest point in, uh, of, of night The owls are able to see Right And we're, we're in this dark time We're in these dark times right so being a seer which israel doesn't want anything to do with seers right with the ones that see this this truth they don't want anything to do with it why isaiah 30 and 9 this is a rebellious people lying children children that will not hear the law of yahweh which say to the seers see not and to the prophets prophesy not unto us right things speak unto us smooth things prophesy deceits right so when you go into that word seers ra a ra a it's to see to look at inspect perceive consider all right to have a per uh, a perceiving mind right to observe things and look at it and, and and be able to see but what do these prophets see futuristic things right they see the scriptures as what it is truth you know so to be a seer what does that mean are you going to be uh, are you going to have 50 percent vision when you're a seer all right if you're supposed to be a seer a visionary right are, are you going to have 20 percent vision and the rest is just blurry you don't know the rest or 10% or 5% because in reality 1% is the equivalent of 99% 1% 1 
because you don't have the whole truth unless it's a hundred percent right so being in 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 this truth is a hundred percent truth you should have a hundred percent truth and if you don't if you don't understand scripture if you don't understand certain prophecies if you don't understand you know mainly anything then you're not a seer right you're not a prophet you're not really you know a uh, somebody that, that that's learned and to be out in the highways and byways man you know because to see is is, is key and important in this truth right whom shall he te teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine those that see right the ones that see why because precept is upon precept line upon line and here a little and there a little right Precept, precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and with another tongue shall he speak to his people. You know, we see the scriptures for what it is, a puzzle, right? But that puzzle that we carry, that we're able to see, we're, we're able to see the whole picture. We don't have just the, the corner pieces to the puzzle. We have the whole thing. You know, we have the whole thing, man. The whole thing is filled out for us, right? From Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the, the important picture that has been given to us, right? We're not going to know, you know, how, how we're going to name the planets or what names the planets are going to have. We're not going to know, you know, what, what size shoes we're all going to wear or how, what type of shoes we're going to wear in the kingdom of heaven. We don't know those things. Right, but the things that we know, the hundred percent truth that we know, is the truth of salvation. Right, that's what makes us seers. You know, so you should strive to be an owl and to strive to be in in, in a, a a dragon or a serpent. You should strive to be those things, man. You know, in, in the righteous sense. You know, strive to be a, a righteous owl and a righteous serpent, man. To be a seer. And an owl does what, man? All right, let's look that up. Owls can rotate their head about their neck three, 270 degrees plus or minus a few degrees. All right, see, for example, but they can see 360 degrees and more around them without ever moving their talons and feet, especially when under distress, as in this demonstration. All right, so they can rotate their neck only 270 degrees, which is not the whole uh, 100, but that 270 degrees that they can rotate allows them to see that 360, right? So the same thing with this truth, man. We don't have, you know, the, the, the full 100, you know, and 10%, which is all the truth that the Most High carries, right? But the little bit that we do have is the 100% 100, 100 truth that we carry for salvation. You see what I'm saying? So this truth is like in being an owl is, is able to see everything the most high is allowing you to see right he's not giving you that full rotation meaning you have all the knowledge you know every single thing you know the names of all the stars because believe it or not the most high named every single star man every single star that when you look up in into the sky he named everything all right that's why whenever adam uh was was naming everything adam didn't just pull shit out of his ass and say rack back tack lack shack mac started naming things you know as a freestyle that's not how adam did it it was through the wisdom knowledge understanding of the most high because the most high had already named everything and so even, even something simple like that people bug the hell out no adam named everything well what do you think adam got the wisdom the knowledge and the understanding to name things man it was given to him by the most high right yeah adam did name it but the wisdom knowledge understanding was given to him by the most high you know 
That's how Adam was able to, to, to bring that knowledge. This is called a cow. This is a camel, right? Through the knowledge given to Adam, you know? But the Most High also named the stars. He named the moon a certain way. The earth, Arataza, right? Now, did he give us the, the names of the stars? This star over here in this constellation, billions of miles away and billions and billions and billions of years away. This specific star out of the 2.55 billion that's in this constellation is named this. No, he didn't give us that information, right? That's why we only have 270 degrees that we can look at. But in those 270 degrees, we have 360, which is a full circle. All right, which is a full circle to salvation. You see? So if you're a seer, you have to be a seer in 360 degrees for this salvation, man. Because that's the important thing that we're going to be preaching, this salvation, which comes through what? Knowing the prophecies, which are what? The RFID chip being the mark of the beast, right? America, Babylon the Great, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, you know, Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Zion, the elect that come out of the world and follow after Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the fullness of the word, right? World War Three, martial law being Jacob's trouble, World War Three being wars and rumors of wars. All these things that, that, that add up, all right, are, are, are something that we're supposed to be carrying, right? Because 100% truth is going to be given to the elect of the Most High, you know? So coming back to Isaiah 30 and 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And that's what they don't want. And that's why they're coming up against mainly Great Millstone, coming up against what we speak, you know, by by the way of going through other camps, you know, because they're not going to attack Great Millstone directly because we're bringing it out straight from the scripture. But the way that the other camps go off, that's how they'll attack Great Millstone. Well, you know, you guys believe in the black Hebrew Israel. We're not the black Hebrew Israelites. I don't know how many times we've had to make videos about that. We're not black. Black means void of knowledge. Black means dark evil right we're not black even the brothers that are that are that are dark they're not black all right they're brown you know we all are we all are brown and and, and dark brown and light brown and, and pale skin right but as long as we have the spirit of an israelite that's what we're worried about man you know and that's also part of that 360 degrees man you know Exodus 23 and 13, and in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth, right? And that goes into, you know, really worshiping these other gods and, and, and using these other gods' names as, as form of worship, all right? The reason we bring out the name of other gods is for edification, right? Like back then you had this false god that was being preached in the old world, all right, which was after the time of Yahweh Shai and before the time of Yahweh Shai, which his name is Serapis Christos. The followers of him are known as Christian, you know? So when Yahweh Shai uh, was crucified and after he came back uh, from the dead and then he was here for uh, 40 days, and then the Pentecost happened, you know, a couple days after. Um, and Yahweh Shai went back up. Eventually, you had this truth that was distorted. And you had people that started putting Serapis Christos in uh, the face of Serapis Christos on, on Yahweh Shai. Right? So eventually, he started being preached 
and people that were preaching Yahweh Shai were like, oh, you're the follower of Serapis Christos, right? Or of Christos. I'm going to call you Christian. They started adopting heathen customs is basically what I'm getting to, right? So then they started adopting the names of, of certain heathen customs like Zeus, and they started calling them Jesus or Jesus, all right? The same thing with Christos, which, which Serapis Christos is Zeus and Osiris, you know, and the bull Serapis, which is from the Egyptians, you know? So they really put all those gods in, and mashed them into one, and they started calling him Jesus Christos or Jesus Christos, which is not who Yahweh is. So the reason we bring it up is for edification's sake, not to worship those gods, you know. But it says, in all things that I have said unto thee, be circumspect, right? All things that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has said unto us through the scriptures, be circumspect, which is shamar, right? To keep guard, observe, give heed. To keep, have charge of, to keep guard, keep watch and ward, right? To protect and save life, you see? So to be circumspect, you're keeping these things that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has said. You're watching over these things, but you're also being a watch guard, right? A watchman. There we go. Watchman. So let's look that up. Security guard. A man employed to look after an empty building, especially at night. And what happens at night? The owls come out, right? <laughs> so that's that. That's the, the post that we were given. We were given to be guards at night, right? To be, uh, what is that? that sh that movie called guardian guardians or something like that it was a movie i watched years and years ago man and the movie guardians i believe it's called is a movie about owls right and in that movie owls they call it a gizmo or whatever and it's whenever their eyes see a specific pattern that they have to follow in order to get a better flight or, or faster flight you know, and you have to be a trained owl in order to get into that flight. And those owls get into that gizmo. What is that movie called, man? You know, because that movie was was pretty good in like spiritual uh, movie owls. Owls flight. I don't think it's called owls. Gizmo scene maybe legend of the guardians that's what it's called man see legend of the guardians and who are the guardians us we're the guardians of this truth and in that movie they played with owls right the movie was all about owls the good owls versus the bad owls and what were the bad owls they were the guardians of the darkness guardians of of evil you know, trying to keep the light from shining in this world. And what were the guardians, the legend of the guardians? It was the, the good guardians, all right, that were fighting for light, that were able to see through the darkness, you know? And that's what the elder apostle Gabar went into. If you're an owl, you're able to see through the darkest, right? Through the darkest time. So you're going to be a seer. If you're a seer, you're circumspect, right? Circum meaning circle all right 360 and spect meaning your eyes right to see you're going to see 360 degrees that's what it means to be circumspect you know and if you're an owl in this truth you're going to be circumspect because an owl sees 360 degrees you know which means you're a watcher you know so like Yahweh Shai said, watch therefore. Watch therefore, Matthew 24 and 42, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Right? You don't really know when Yahweh Shai is coming. That's another part of knowledge. You know? Yahweh Shai, he doesn't know when, when he's going to come back. You know? He said only the Most High knows the hour and the time. Right. 
Only the Most High Yahweh knows the hour and the time. So does that mean Yahweh Shai didn't have 100% truth? No. Yahweh Shai does have 100% truth. But he had 100% truth of what the Most High gave him. Right? If anybody else outside of Yahweh Shai had more knowledge, wisdom, understanding than Yahweh Shai, all right, then Yahweh Shai wouldn't be Yahweh Shai. But that shouldn't even be mentioned. Right? Because Yahweh Shai is the truth. He is the way. He is the light. Right? He is our uh, our savior. You know? So we're supposed to watch. Because we don't know when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is coming. So to be a watchman. Let's go into that word watch. Matthew 24 and 42. Watch. Gro Goreo. All right. Gragoreo, salake, gragoreo means to watch. All right? It means to watch, simply. Metaphor, give strict attention to, be cautious, and active. You know? How are you active? You're active in this in this word, in this truth. You're fervent in heat, right? You're being cautious. How? Because you're not in the ways of the world. You're walking in the ways of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, trying not to fall off, Right? You're being strict and paying attention to what? To Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, through the elders, apostles, uh, uh, through the spirit. Right? It says, to take heed lest through remission and idolence, some destructive calamity suddenly overtake one. And that's what we don't want. We don't want the flood all over again. Right? Because in the time of the flood, we weren't watching. We weren't seeing. We weren't doing anything. We were being... Uh, complete niggas you know in the world abusing it using it overusing it that's what we were doing in the time of the flood right and what happened we were destroyed you know so now we have to be submerged into this truth which is where the baptism is the baptism is no longer dipping yourself in water you can you you can be dipped in water and and, and do that you know, there's no sin against that. But really where it's at, it's this truth. All right? It's this truth, this word, this wisdom, this knowledge, understanding. Going out to the highways and the byways, making videos, studying, reading, being involved in this truth. That's what makes you baptized. Right? In the book of First uh, Peter chapter 3 and verse 20 on down, really verse 17 on down. It talks about in the time of the flood, the Most High was long suffering toward us. All right. And we didn't listen, you know. So now he's long suffering toward us where even baptism does save us, not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards the Most High by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Right. Which is the way you carry yourself, you know. So really putting water it has no meaning. It really doesn't. All right. It's not going to bring you the spirit. The spirit is not going to fall on you because you got dipped in some water. All right. The spirit is going to fall on you according to the grace and mercy Yahweh Shai has on you. Right. That's why the Apostle Paul had said, I have planted, Apollos has watered, but the Most High gave the increase. Right. And that water is what? This knowledge, this wisdom, understanding. You know, in the book of Acts, chapter 10, it tells you how uh, the the so uh, the Gentiles, which are the Israelite foreigners, were adopted into this truth. All right. They were redeemed in this truth by the faith they carried. They believed as soon as they heard it and they were baptized in the spirit. And even the apostles look at him like, can any forbid water? I believe it was Apostle Peter. You know, that these should not be baptized. It's not about water. It's about the spirit, you know. So we're watching these things of the earth, man. We're watching everything that's happening, things that are going on. You know, the, the, the world affairs. We're watching things in our own place, in our own backyard. Things unfold. Mysteries and, and, and prophecies coming to, to light, you know. And all these things are giving to those owls and to those serpents, right? Those dragons. So you should strive to be an owl or a serpent, a dragon, right? To be 
to be all oh, that that's a great word to be vigilant right what's that word vigilant means watchful keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties right and these are difficult times man it's going to get worse so we're watching that we're mindful of that you know it says wake wake which reminds me of um what is it um romans chapter what is it romans romans 13 and 11 romans 13 and 11 and knowing and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed all right when you're awake you think an owl is going to catch its prey is going to catch its mark by being asleep no and I was not going to look and see, man, I want to eat that and go to sleep, right? An owl does what? How does an owl catch its prey? By watching, right? By looking around, by watching. And when he sees movement, stares at it, looks at it. When he sees danger, he, he looks all around himself, right? He sees danger and he flees. An owl is 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 knowledgeable, right? And that's why an owl is seen as as something great, as as something uh, knowledgeable. You know, because it has three hundred and sixty degrees, even in the darkest times, man. Even in the darkest times, right? So in Romans thirteen eleven, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed, man. And that's what we should be. We should be waking up to this truth. We should be following after this truth. We should be running with this truth. And we should be striving to be owls and dragons. Right? So it says, um, where am I going to go next? Mm, there was another one I wanted to hit. Um... Let me just go back to Matthew 24 and 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Right? Because this we're building the house of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai right now. So what are we doing? We're being watchmen, right? So you go into the word watch again. It says, Fialeke of Fualaka, Fualaka, which is a guard, a watch, watching, keeping watch, person keeping watch, a guard, sentinels, in the place where captives are kept, a prison, right? And we're in the shadow of valley, the, the valley of, of death, man. You know, this is America. This is the, the valley of death. This is where our people have been slain and have been left out in the streets as dead, man. Because this is where our people are in a dead state of mind. All right. We're held captives here, you know. So we're keeping watch. And we're pro proclaiming the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Right. A seer, again, is not going to have only 20% truth. Right, a seer is not going to be watching up in the tower and come down and say, "Hey, I think I saw something." Right? Because then what's going to happen? That boy's going to get his ass whooped or kicked out. You know? I think, I think there was a bad guy outside the door. I don't know. What's going to happen? You're going to get your ass kicked out, right? Same thing with a security guard. A security guard's not going to go to his his managers and, and say, "You know what? I I." think they were going to rob the bank i'm not sure you know they're decisive right and let's go into that word decisive man because that seems like something important to be in this truth right decisive and it is uh when you decide see if i spelt it right 
Let me just say it. Oh, I put I instead of E. All right, it says decisive, having the power or quality of deciding, putting an end to controversy, crucial or most important, right? And and actually, you know, I, I comes to my remembrance, I believe the elders actually went into the word decisive, you know? So decisive again, having the power or quality of deciding, right? You're 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 decisive when you come into this truth. All right, I I decided I'm going to be a follower of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and I'm going to be a seer, and I'm going to do whatever He bids. And, and if something doesn't go my way, then that's the will and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and Kahalalim La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, whether it goes the way I want it or not. That's you being decisive. You being not decisive as well, you know. I I agree with this, but the, this over here doesn't seem like it. I I don't I don't know. I I can't follow that, and that's how a lot of people are. They they don't want to hear something and they don't want to follow it. You know. That thing with with the supposed rape thing, you know, which we were just bringing out the scriptures on what it was back then. A lot of people don't want to hear that. No, that's not true. That, that That's not in the scriptures. Even though you're bringing it right out of the scriptures, man. You know? It says, putting an end to controversy. And the elder apostle Gabar went into that video talking about Cornelius. Because he believed, and we believe, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, we know that Cornelius is an Israelite. And that was a big controversy. The same thing with the RFID chip. We believe and we know that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. And that's another controversy. Why? Because we're decisive. You know? We see something that's right and something that matches with scripture filtered over and over. That's what it is. Decisiveness, man. And these people are not decisive. Crucial or most important. And that RFID chip is one of the most important things. Same thing with Jacob's trouble that's coming. It's right around the corner. A lot of these groups are not decisive. They're yes, and then they're no, and let's change it up, and it's not even there. That's how they are, man. James 1 and 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, right? And Alwa, what he does is he looks 360 degrees. He sees 360. You think an owl's going to be, you know, alive? An owl's going to survive off of only 90 90 degrees I'm only watching 90 degrees which is strictly just in front of what he's seeing because you really an owl sees 90 degrees already you know you think an owl's only going to want to watch 90 degrees that's covering one of your eyes and looking back and forth man that's 90 degrees to an owl you think he's going to catch meat you think he's going to survive off of 90 degrees He's watching 360 degrees, man. You know? Most importantly, you think the Most High, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai, who have a bidding, you think he's really only going to give us 20% truth? You think he's only going to hand us, here, these are my names, and that's all I'm giving you? Come on, man. You're taking power away from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So no matter what, you're going to fail. If you think that, oh, well, I only have I only have the faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I don't need to know the prophecies. All I need is the faith. But there you are, lazy as hell. You don't want to go into scripture. You don't want to go into prophecy. You don't want to listen. Being a fucking toad. Right? A couch potato. And then when this stuff starts coming out, you're going to start freaking out, man. Your mind is not going to be stable. All right. And what brings stability to our minds is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai through this knowledge, right? Isaiah 33 and verse 2. Oh, Yahweh, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our, our strength, right? Our salvation also in the time of trouble. You know, 
jumping down to verse 5, Yahweh is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. Right? We know that he has absolute control over everything. And we know that what he gave us is true. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. You see? And Zion are the monuments, the elect, the men, the elect men, you know? He has filled them with, with judgment and righteousness. How? Verse 6, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Right? So if you don't have that wisdom, that knowledge, or understanding, you're not going to see that salvation, man. You know? So let's look up the word wisdom. And it's the word uh, chakma, chakma, which means wisdom. Still in war, wisdom in administration, shrewdness in wisdom. Shrewdness means, let's see if it loads up. Astuteness, the quality of having or showing good power of judgment, right? If you don't have wisdom, if you're not a seer, how can you have that judgment? You know, what does the blind do? Can the blind judge where they're going? You know? Matthew 15 and 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if blind leaders the bl if blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. What does a blind man lack? A blind man lacks seeing, right? He lacks being a seer. He lacks having vision. You know? If you lack vision, what happens? You fall into a ditch. You know? Part of lacking vision is saying you can have sex on the Sabbath days. That's lacking vision. Part of lacking vision is saying the RFID chip is not the mark of the beast. That's lacking vision. Right? Part of lacking vision is Cornelius is not an Israelite. Part of lacking vision is saying the so-called white man is not the Edomites. Part of lacking vision is saying that the Israelites are not the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and many scattered abroad with the same spirit that we bring. Right? Part of lacking vision is saying the Most High doesn't care if you keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's, that all goes into lacking vision, which makes you a blind man, right? Right? A blind man cannot see. If he cannot see in the daylight, which makes you, uh, 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 what is it called, stumble, you know, which is a curse that was given upon Israel. We're going to stumble even in, the, in, in, the, in noon, right, which is when the sun is the highest, man, you know. If you're going to stumble even in those times, how much more when it gets darker, man? How much more when it gets darker, you know? You ain't going to be able to see shit at all, man. You know? So you think that, that, that a man of the Lord is going to have 20% vision? You know? The rest 80 is just blurry? Hell no, man. A, a, a man of the Lord is going to have that 100% vision. 100%. He's not going to be a blind man. Right? So verse uh, Luke 6 and 39 and he spake a parable unto them, talking about Yahweh Shai. And these are words from Yahweh Shai. That's why it's written in red. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? So if we don't have 100% truth, which is 100% vision to the seers, to the prophets, then what do we have, man? We have nothing, right? We don't have anything at all, man. And this lesson can go on, on and on and on and on. Right? Because there's so much that we can go into, you know? But strive to be an owl and strive to be a dragon, you know? Which is a seer and a doer of the word. So I hope that was edifying. And with that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to Yakim out there. Shalom.